Hi, I'm Darren Kaplan from the Canacribs Horticultural Consulting Team, and today we're here to share some concepts that we discuss and implement to help commercial cannabis growers operate as efficiently and successfully as possible. In front of me, we have our cloning cart. We like to keep a different cart for every process in the cultivation facility and every room specifically. So for cloning, we have one. For cutting back mothers, we have one. For flower rooms, for pruning, we have one. On the clone cart specifically, we have clean scissors in a green bin, so everything's color-coded. We have a red bin for dirty scissors. We have a container here of a 10% bleach solution for disinfecting the scissors after taking cuts. We've used a very wheat food safe dye in here to mark bleach, but it's useful to know which one is bleach, which one is water, but just make sure that the food safe dye is actually compatible with bleach before you use it. You can also just use a different color container for the water and the bleach. So here we have bleach, and here we just have straight reverse osmosis water. We also have three spray bottles here. We have a vegetative fertilizer at an EC of 1.5 and a pH of 6.5. We're using that for spraying cuttings to keep them moist and maintain turgor and also give them a little bit of a feed before they're cut, before they're transplanted. We're using color coding here, so this one's a green cap so that there's no mistakes and you're not spraying bleach, for example, on your plants by accident. Red here is for bleach. This is a 10% bleach solution. We mix this fresh every day because bleach is not stable once it's diluted. We'll put the expiry date of all of these spray bottles, everything that's mixed underneath what the actual bottle can contains on the label. For blue, isopropyl alcohol diluted to 70%. We also have the expiration date. We use this for cleaning surfaces. It's not necessarily effective for cleaning for hop latent, as it hasn't been shown to neutralize the viroid effectively, but it's still good for cleaning surfaces. It leaves no residue, and it's a good all-purpose sanitizer. We have some paper towels, or you can use uh, microfiber cloths for cleaning the scissors before you dunk them in the bleach. We also have a timer here. We use the timer to keep track of the disinfection time for the bleach and the scissors. We also have gloves on the cart. Between every cultivar, I would say, is the lowest bar for changing your gloves. But between every plant, or as often as you feel comfortable, it's important to do a spray on your hands with a 10% bleach solution. Make sure you're spraying away from your eyes and down a couple sprays as if you're washing your hands. Completely allow the bleach to cover your gloves and let it air dry. And then you can continue working on the next plant. I would consider these procedures best practice in general, but what we're targeting here specifically is hop latent viroid. The hop latent viroid is one of the most damaging pathogens that we're seeing in cannabis crops right now. And it's also one of the most prolific for being easy to transmit when you're taking cuttings or when you're working with plants. So all of these procedures are designed around minimizing the risk of passing hop latent viroid from one plant to another and in general avoiding cross-contamination. Okay, let's imagine we are taking clones off mothers. We're going to use one pair of scissors per plant and once that scissor is used, we're going to place it in the dirty bin. We're going to continue doing that, scissor per plant, one scissor per plant, until you have enough scissors that it fits inside your disinfection vessel. We're gonna take these scissors out when it's time to clean them and when you need fresh scissors. We're gonna wipe away any residue on the scissors. Anything that's remaining on the scissors, pieces of leaf, plant material, or exudate from the plants, unless you remove them physically through a cleaning process, the bleach won't be able to penetrate and it won't do its job in just one minute. So it's really important that you have some kind of cleaning process. You can use paper towel or you could use a microfiber cloth to wipe off any residue before you disinfect. I'm gonna do that with each pair of scissors and put them completely completely into the bleach solution so that the handle is submerged. You get cross-contamination also from the handles so that it's important that the handles are also disinfected through this process. I'm gonna pull out my timer and I'm gonna start the timer for one minute. You need that complete one minute from the time that the last pair of scissors went into your bleach mixture. It's okay if it's two minutes, but you want at least one minute for all pairs of scissors. So now I'm gonna take the scissors out of the bleach solution. Make sure you're using gloves here so that you don't get bleach on your hands. We're gonna do a quick rinse in fresh RO water, let them dry, drip a little bit, and then they're gonna go back into the green bucket for clean. If you have the ability to skip this step and to just run these scissors under fresh water in a sink, it's a little bit better because there's a risk of cross-contamination in here, but it does slow down the process quite a bit, so it's a better way to do it, but it's a little bit less efficient, so it's gonna be up to you. And then the process goes on. These scissors get used for taking new cuts, and they go back into the dirty bin when they're done. So now that we have our implements ready to go, we're good, we're clean, we're organized, and we're well-labeled, we're gonna start the cloning process on some moms behind me. Of course, the first step is to take cuts from the mother. What I like to do is first to look at my mothers to see how many clones can I get, how much do I have to cut from the plant. The most important thing that we want to do is make sure that we take the healthiest cuts from the plants that are going to have the easiest time rooting and that are going to be healthy plants going forward. So the first thing I want to do here is make sure that we have all my tools, my utensils. I'm going to be spraying my hands with my bleach solution. I have here one container, in this case, just a dome that we have now labeled the strain name as well as the number of the mother. 
keep track of the clones that you take from each mother, just so that in case anything happens with the clones in veg or in flour, you can always cross-reference and trace back to the mother. So first we're gonna take our clean scissors. So they have been already sanitized in the bleach solution. We take a look at the mother. In this case, this mother is quite overgrown. And we're gonna see you know, where the, the healthiest cuts are, how far down I'm gonna be going down with my cuts. What we wanna do is we take a cut where the node splits into two. In this case, I could go as low as this cut, for example. However, in this case, because the mother is so overgrown, I don't wanna take so much foliage off. So I'm gonna be cutting up here. So as I can see, if I make the cut here, what's gonna happen is that this node is gonna be left over, the same as this one over here. So the plant will continue to grow. So we're gonna make the cut and we'll try to make it on an angle so that the cut is able to dry better, as well as any runoff, for example, is gonna be able to go down the plant. So we can see how we cut the node here. What we can do also, we already know the size and the type of cut that we want to take. For example, we like to focus our clones to be, let's say, apical shoots, for example, as well as some long auxiliary shoots as well. So what we can do is cut off the excess, cut this one off here. And then now when we go into the clone room, now we can have these cuts over here that we can use to make our clones. Have our vegetative fertilizer handy. And every time that you make a cut, we'll just give it a quick spritz. So what we're trying to do here is to keep our cuts hydrated. We're trying to keep the VPD as well as possible within this dome so that the cuttings don't dry out. So we'll continue making our cuts. I'll usually take the highest branch and then as I did before, just go all the way down to see where the node splits into two. And we see here a good point. Okay, we're gonna take another cut here. Some people like to cut the clone to the correct size here in the mother room, for example. Uh, so this is the size of clone we're gonna be sticking in the clone room. However, I like to keep it all intact so that I have some more time by the time I actually stick the clones and they can keep a lot more of the moisture. I like to take multiple cuts at the same time just so that at the process becomes more efficient. As always, trying to see on the mother plant where it splits into two. So now I've taken a few. And now we can spray everything. As we finish off the mother, one of the things to keep in mind is that we don't like to take more than 30 or 40% of the foliage of the total canopy of the plant, just to prevent stress. If you take more than that, what's gonna happen is that the plant is gonna need more time to recover. Some of the leaves at the bottom of the canopy may not be well optimized for the light levels that you wanna give it. So you wanna do maybe the cut in stages, for example. Maybe one maintenance cut in which you just take the top of the canopy and then a harder cut if you're trying to reshape the mother itself. In this case, because we started with such an overgrown plant and we're trying to bring it back to a more manageable state. We usually prefer to take clones from the apical part of the branch, for example, so that the clones here have a different hormone balance compared to the lateral branches. These ones here coming off of the side of the branch. Usually we see higher success in terms of rooting with the apical branch as you see here. However, in this case we're trying to maximize also the number of clones. So we'll, we're gonna try to take as much as we can from the mother. At this point, there's gonna be only some smaller branches left on the plant. I'm gonna be turning around the mother, looking to see if I missed any branches, anything else that I can remove. Some of these may not be good for making clones. Some of these may be. At this point, what I'm trying to do is to cut back my mother as much as I can. Maybe remove some dead leaf material as I have here, for example. As you can see, I've reduced a substantial amount of the mother itself. This mother shouldn't take more than a week or a week and a half to recover and start producing new shoots to be taken as clones. And one thing to keep in mind is that now the water demand for the plant itself is gonna change substantially. And what's gonna happen is that you need to watch now your irrigation frequency, timing, your dry backs are gonna be different. So that's why it's good to have, let's say, every day you should check your moisture content of the mother. Also check the EC pH level to see that there are no imbalances. But overall, if you keep a good canopy size and you cut your mothers on a regular basis, you shouldn't have any problem with this. After you finish taking most of your cuts from the mother, what you can do too is pinch or top some of the remaining branches that you may have, just so that you make sure that new shoots are coming up so you can take clones from them next time. So now that we finished taking our clones, cutting back our mothers, giving it a good shape, what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray the cuttings a bit more just to make sure that they don't dry out. And then we're gonna transport our dome to the clone room where they're gonna get processed, they're gonna get cut to size, stuck, and then we're gonna finish our cloning process. The first thing that we're gonna do is to check our environment to make sure that the clones come into the best possible conditions. So we're gonna check our temperature, our humidity or VPD, and the light levels that we have 
on the brass. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cuttings and cut them to size. So we're gonna focus on cutting the tips of the branches so that we have the best chance of rooting success. So first we're gonna make a cut here and then we're gonna remove all the extra growth from the shoot. What we want to have is a clone that's about four to five inches in length, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it so that we can put it in the water and then subsequently make the final cut right before we stick it. So this is a bit longer than five inches, but as I said, we're gonna cut it again just before we stick. This is gonna go in the water. So now we have the Clonex solution here. What we're gonna do is dispense the rooting hormone into an individual container. This way, we don't cross-contaminate the main container. We just use whatever we need for this cloning event. So we can fill the container with a small amount of cloning gel just so that we don't use more than we need to. At this step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our clones that were in water and we're gonna cut them to the final length. We're gonna make a 45 degree angle cut just like this. And we're gonna dip it in the cloning gel. After that, we're gonna go to the substrate and we're gonna stick it into the substrate. One to two centimeters in depth. What we're gonna do is we're gonna check that the clone fits snugly in the substrate by gently tugging and that's it. We've completed the cloning process and we're gonna continue with filling the rest of the tray. One thing that you can look at as well is how much leaf you wanna maintain on your cutting. So you can see here Juan has about three fully expanded leaves and if we were to fill the tray with similar size cuttings it might get fairly congested. So what you'd look at doing is either removing big leaves so we could remove a leaf like this and the node and you'd have a cutting like that which is a decent size. Sometimes it's not possible to have a cutting that has a reasonable size of foliage without cutting the tips of the leaves. So sometimes if you're avoiding congestion in the cloning tray you might want to cut the tips of the leaves. I wouldn't say in this case but with the clone here that Juan plugged previously, pull it out. Potentially, I would cut off a bit of these leaves to give a more reasonably sized clone. So in 2018, myself and my colleagues at the University of Guelph actually did a study on the effects of the number of leaves, cutting leaf tips, and a few other factors on the success rates of rooting cannabis. What we found was that it was better to have about two or three fully expanded leaves. So here you can see this is about two fully expanded leaves. And we found that there was a bit of a negative success rate, a bit lower rooting if you did cut the leaves. What we didn't take into account was the congestion on the clone tray. So we had as much space as we required in that study. So in some cases, I would still advise against cutting the leaves if you don't have to, but if you're going to have a congested tray, then I would say sometimes you can cut the leaves. We've had some discussions and heard a bunch of different opinions on whether or not you have to cut below a node, above a node. Typically, we're not too bothered if you're below, above a node, or at a node. It seems to work fine, but there might be things that people are doing that we don't know about. So again, there's no one way to clone, just the way that we do it. In your procedures, it's really important to standardize the height of your clones. So something I'll do here for quick measurement is I'll take this clone and I'll put it up against a ruler and I'm going to say that I want it to be four inches. I'm going to go from the growing tip to four inches and I'm going to cut this one on an angle to use as a guide. Now, if I want to have a kind of a faster point of reference, I'll see how this lines up in my hand. So I'll put the growing tip right at the top of my index finger and then I can see that this is extending about three quarters of an inch to an inch and I'll use that as a rough template going forward. So now that one has got a little bit ahead of me, I can show you how it make it a little bit faster by doing several clones at once. So I'm going to line up this first one in my hand, growing tip at my index, grab the second one, do the same, third, do the same, same with the fourth, close my fist, cut them about the point that I measured before and then because all the growing tips are all aligned, I can see what kind of foliage is going to be quite large and just cut that foliage and that'll give me about five clones that are ready to plug and that makes things a lot faster. I'm also trying to point most of the foliage away from the edge of the tray. I'm going to be putting a humidity dome on this afterwards and if you have the leaves like you can see this leaf here, this is right now going to get caught by the dome so I'll just turn it around, twist it a little bit, ideally just plug it straight down so that when we put the dome on it's not going to get caught. Basically you want to make sure that the leaves are not touching each other too much. You get leaves that are touching too much, you get little microclimates and points of condensation of moisture, and then you have a higher likelihood of mold and mildew. So I'm gonna look at the tray as a whole and look for leaves that are overlapping or apical nodes that are being completely blocked by another leaf. So I'm gonna remove some leaves that are shading the final quality control check. And if there's a clone or two that are a little small or uneven, we'll replace them with a fresh one. Uniform height is absolutely critical because if one clone starts to get taller than another, it shades the other ones, and then it'll outcompete it and it'll continue Continue to grow taller until you have clones that are completely shaded and useless. I'm going to give these a final spritz of vegetative fertilizer at 1.5 EC and a balanced pH 6.5. We're going to put the dome on the tray. Make sure that both vents are open. We're going to start with open vents. Make sure that we're tucking in all the clones inside of the tray. We will then label the clone tray, the genetic name, batch ID, and date of cloning. We'll take our tray and we'll put it on the rack itself.
Now that the clones are on the tray, I'm gonna measure at canopy level, so at the top of the clones, for about 100 to 150 PPFD, which we're hitting here. And then as the clones grow and we're able to take the domes off and they root, we can increase the light intensity either by putting the clones closer to the lights or putting them on racks where the lights are more intense. So there are many ways of creating clones successfully, but what we wanna focus on is the workflow and the efficiency of making clones consistently and in a large quantity and scale. This way we can find efficiencies by having the team members specialize into each individual task and we can actually go very quick with the cloning process. When we set up a system like this, then we can track our overall performance using a KPI or a key performance indicator. For a cloning process, for example, what we usually like to see is that we can produce between 100 and 200 clones per person per hour. So what we do is we total the number of hours that we work. So for example, people that are cutting the mothers, people that are stripping the clones, and and processing the clones, then people that are cutting it to size and sticking it in the substrate. Once we add up all the hours, we take the final number of clones that we created over that amount of time and we get that KPI. This will ensure that your team is working as efficient and as effective as possible. So we've taken you through our cloning process, focusing on how to make things quick, efficient, and have the absolute best success in cloning and uniformity. There's a million ways to do this. We're just showing you what we like to do in this facility at this time. Efficiencies are always useful, so hopefully that's something here that you can use in your cultivation.